Hey everyone, Boone here from premiumbeat.com. So today I'm going to show you how to create these simple call out graphics in Adobe After Effects. And I'm going to focus on showing you a method of how to connect all these elements to make them extremely easy to work with. Hey everyone, so I'm working on a documentary right now and I have a five second shot in my documentary where my narrator is talking about the height of these towers of this cathedral. So I want to bring in a motion graphic to help illustrate that point. So what I can do here is I can use a callout graphic. So here we have this little callout that's showing that it's 227 feet. Super simple and very, very nice. So what I want to do is I want to recreate this. So if we take a closer look, just a few basic elements. We have our point or our dot here. We have a path. We have our text element and we have a rectangle for the text of the background of the text. So let's go ahead and recreate these elements here. So I have this sequence here with my clean clip. So the first thing I want to do is grab the shape tool, make sure I have the ellipse selected. I have my fill set to solid and I've turned my stroke off. I have a white fill. I'm going to hold shift to drag this out. And to make sure that you have your anchor point automatically centered, before you do that, you can go to preferences general and set center anchor point in new shape layers. Uh, very important and now I'm going to rename this just call it uh, let's call it point point and I'm going to close this now I want to create my text element I can go over here grab my text and I'm going to actually turn off this video layer so we can see what we've got here okay now I'm going to type in 227 feet because that's the height of our tower now I'm going to create the background element I'm going to grab the rectangle shape tool I'm going to draw a quick rectangle around the text, just kind of rough it in, and I'll rename this text background. Then I'm going to drag this down under my text, grab both the text and the background, and then go to Window Align, and I'll automatically align these perfectly. And then I'm going to go ahead and parent the text background to the text. So when I grab the text and move it, it's simply, you know, the, the background will automatically come along with it. And then I'm going to grab that text background and turn on the shy layer so we don't want to see that anymore. For path, I could just go ahead and grab the pen tool and create a simple path, but I'm going to show you a method that's a little bit more versatile. And that is, I'm going to create a new solid layer, go to layer, new solid, and I'm going to call this path. Doesn't matter the color. Now I'm going to go to the effects and presets panel, type in beam. I've already got typed in here and I'm gonna simply drag and drop that and that's gonna create this little beam effect here now let's look at some of these attributes here it has a starting and an ending point which I can see here on the comp panel so what I want to do here is I want to make sure this is full length So I'm gonna set the length to 100 so now you can see the path goes all the way to the start and end points which are referenced here now for the thickness that's fine for softness, I want to turn that down all the way. I don't want it soft. And I want to change the colors to white. Okay, so all the elements are here. Now it's time to connect everything. So connecting the elements is quite simple. We're essentially going to be connecting the starting and ending points of our beam path here to the position attributes of our text and our point dot here. So to do that, we're going to do it all within the timeline here. It makes it much easier. So first I'm going to select my path layer, I'm going to hit keyboard shortcut E to bring up the beam, I'm going to open that up, and then I'm going to grab both the text and the point, I'm going to hit keyboard shortcut P to open up the position attributes. Now what I want to do here, since our animation is going to start with this dot animating and then the path animates to reveal the text, we're going to start with the point. So I'm going to go over here, select the starting point. If you're using one of the latest versions of After Effects, you'll have these property pick whips. If you don't see these, you can simply alt click and create an expression here and then you'll be able to see the expression pick whips. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And that's how we're going to connect these here is via expressions. But again, don't be worried about expressions. You don't need to know them. We're just going to be using the pick whips. So here I'm going to grab the starting point and simply go over to the position attribute of our point. And then you'll see now they're automatically connected. I'm going to do the same thing with ending point, move it over my text, and now that's connected. So let's zoom in here. Now the problem is, 
Well, there's a couple of problems we got going on here. First, it's connecting to the bottom of the text. I want it to connect to the center. So what I can do is select my text, and it's doing that because our anchor point is at the bottom of our text. So I can right click on the text, go to Transform, Center Anchor Point and Layer Content. That's gonna center up. But now our path is still above these layers, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the path, move it down below here. And since I don't want to accidentally grab this layer anymore, I'm going to go ahead and lock it off. Okay, and now I can go ahead and close the position attributes here. So now what makes this so versatile is the fact that now I can go and grab my text, and when I move it, that path is going to follow. Not only the background follows, but also the path. And that means if I animate any of the position or any of the attributes for this text layer, this path is going to follow. And the same thing for our point here. But you need to be careful, don't accidentally grab the proportions because you can mess this up. The same goes with the text, you don't want to accidentally screw anything up. Okay, so now we're ready to animate our graphic. So the first thing I want to do is turn my video layer back on. I'm going to zoom out and now I kind of want to loosely position these elements to where I want them to be. And then I can turn that video layer back off. And now we're going to focus on the animations of each element. So first is going to be this point. So I'm going to turn the visibility off of these other elements. Now let's focus in on this point. We want the point to animate in the scale and then have kind of like a radar blip effect. So what I can do is I'm going to open up the contents, look at my ellipse, the transform properties of my ellipse, and we're going to animate the scale here. The reason I'm animating this scale and not the transform properties of the actual layer is because I'm going to add, I'm going to be adding additional elements, and if I animate the scale of the layer, it's going to affect all my elements, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to animate this ellipse to scale up from 0 to 100 over the course of about half a second. I'm going to hit F9 to easy ease this and then I'm going to change the speed of this here. Okay, that's good to go. So that animates in. And now I want, like I said before, I want it to be kind of like a radar blip here. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to simply duplicate this ellipse. And now I'm going to grab this one, come back down. Now that I have two, I am going to animate the opacity of this one. I want the opacity to go from 75 down to 0, and it's going to grow. This one's going to go from, let's say, 0 to 300. And now we want it to come out and be a little bit longer. So now I'm going to change the work area and look at the preview settings. And now we can take a look at our animation. Okay, cool, now we've got a little little uh, radar blip here. So, I'm gonna close this up, this is good to go. Now let's work on the path. So I'm gonna open up the path here. So now we have our blip. So we want our path animation to start right about here. I'm gonna open up the path, and I'll be animating the time attribute. So if I zoom out, and I change the time, we're gonna see that 50% is full. So the beam actually goes from 0 to 100, and as it hits 100, it's off screen. So we want to go from 0 to 50. So first, I'll go from 0 right here, and let's say we want to go um, just around a second and a half. And I'll go to 50. So now that comes up, that goes, perfect. And I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to do the same thing for all keyframes. Hit F9 to easy ease them go into the graph editor and then change the speed of this just make it a little bit different fast in the beginning and it slows down okay so now let's have a look okay perfect so our path's good to go now let's take a look at our text background simple animation let's say when the path hits the rectangle we want this to animate on we'll have a simple X scale so for text background, I'm going to open up the transform properties of my shape element, the rectangle. I'm going to turn off constrained proportions for scale, and then we're going to go from 0 to 100. OK, 
Okay, and same thing, F9. And now let's have a look. Okay, very cool. Very cool and very simple. Now what I want to do is I got to animate the text on some way. So I'm going to turn on the visibility of the text and we want it to reveal on. As soon as that graphic comes up, we want that to reveal the text. So to do that, I'll create a simple luma mat. It's very, very simple actually. I'm going to duplicate this background, bring it above the text. So now it's above the text. And all I need to do is go to my text layer, set the track mat settings to luma mat. And then that will automatically change that to a luma mat. So as soon as that animates on, that's going to do that. So just remember, if you change the animation of your text background, you need to change that mat as well to fit that text. Okay, so now we have our animation. Okay, now let's take a look at how this animation looks on top of our video clip. Okay, the animation's looking pretty good, but this is a handheld shot here and it's moving. So we want that point to follow this tower. Now there's two different methods we could use. I could manually add keyframes by hand to the position attribute of this point and have it follow along, which would look fine. Or I can be very, very detailed and use a tracker. So let me quickly show you how to use a tracker. Now the tracker is pretty in depth and I'm just gonna kind of breeze over it here and show you for the purposes of this project how you would use it. But I really suggest if you wanna get good with a tracker that you check out some tutorials. So I'm gonna to go to Window, select Tracker. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm tracking a point on our video clip. I'm gonna take that tracking information and, and apply it to this little graphic dot. So I'm gonna grab my video clip and now you can see these buttons are now active. We wanna track motion and that's gonna bring up our source clip in the layer panel. And now that all the default settings are just fine. We have it set to track the transform, the position. All I need to do is go to edit target, and that's where, you know, the layer that is gonna be applying that tracking data to. So we wanna set that to the point. Now, a lot of people will create a null layer. That does give you more versatility, because then you can just parent this, but I'm just gonna do this really quickly. Set it to point, select okay. Now, if you look here, this is our tracker selection here. Now, all I really need to do is find a good area of contrast. Here's a little white hotspot. I'm gonna select there. Let me just bring this up. And now I'm ready to analyze this. Actually, our playhead's right in the middle, so I'm gonna actually bring the playhead to the beginning. And I'm gonna reselect our point here, which, where was it? It was right there. Here we go set that and now I can analyze forward and I'm just gonna watch that make sure it doesn't drift okay perfect now I'm gonna click apply and after I click apply and select OK now we're gonna see all these keyframes have been added and if I look down here on the point and press P you can see all these keyframes have been added and now look what happens with my callout graphic that position was set perfectly and the callout graphic is working well now. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality, royalty-free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.